Hello, this is uh, Dr. Mohammed, and this is a new uh, video under the uh, seismic design of structures. And today I'm going to continue on the same topic that we have started uh, before regarding P delta effects part three. And today I'm going to talk about uh, three different uh, points. Mainly, we are going to focus on an example, uh, P delta example. Uh, based on multi-story building and I'm going to talk about how to use uh, the P delta uh, already uh, given in the uh, in the code and also using the software and I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, stability ratios back calculation of stability ratios if we are going to use uh, analysis software and number three computation of actual story over strength in order to satisfy the requirements of uh, of the uh, multi-story building uh, against the requirements of the P delta. So let's go and have the example directly. This example that I'm working on today is going uh, to be based on the seismic load. This is the source seismic load guide to the seismic load provision. It is based on ASC 710. But anyway, it is the same and applies well to um, AC 716, I think. Okay, now this is the example. It's a multi-story steel moment resisting uh, space frame placed at the perimeter. And actually, uh, uh, it is like uh, commonly we put the uh, resisting uh, frames to be like on the perimeter here the outside of the building so if we're going to talk about uh, earthquake direction in the uh, south north or north south direction then two steel frames are going to work we are only focusing on one of them okay each perimeter frame has five bays as you can see they are like five bays each uh, 30 feet uh, wide so the width is 30 feet there is uh, one 12 feet deep basement, as you can see. There is 12 feet basement here. Uh, and 18 uh, feet high first story. So the first story is 18. This is commonly the way of how the regular buildings are always... Um, uh, the, the configuration of buildings in general something like this. We have a basement and then we have the first floor to be uh, uh, like longer or it is the the length or the height of the first floor is um, larger than the um, the other stories okay so the other stories as you can see they are eight stories with 13 feet height okay and eight additional upper stories each uh, with a height of 13 the total height of the structure above the grade is 122 Feet, so the total height is 122 feet. The place is in Seattle, Washington on side class D soils. The beam sizes are the same for each bay across the level and the column size is the same for all columns in a given story. So each story the same column uh, size and the same beam size. So they are the same and we have differences between or among the stories okay and then uh, it's something maybe related to the uh, to the design itself <clears throat> because this example is extracted from other examples so there is Doppler plates are used in interior columns only we're not going to use this piece of information in our study or in our calculation for P delta okay now these are the important information about our structure Let's go now to give some um, dimensions and weights that is going to be important for our analysis. So we have nine stories, as you can see here. The height of the stories in terms of inch take care of the units. So it is all of them the same except the first story, as we said, it is going to be higher. We are not including the, uh, the basement, okay? We are starting from the first story directly. Then we are having the live and dead load because they are going to contribute for our analysis for P delta. If you remember, we, we said before, gravity loads are going to be used unfactored. 
So if we have live load, did load, if we have snow load, for example, can be included as well. A small hint about the live load that uh, live load, as you can see, they are all the same, but small hint about it that live loads uh, needed for p-delta analysis are based on a reduced live load of 20 pound per square foot acting over the full floor. So reduction of live load is, uh, has been used here. Did load, it is the same, all of them the same except the first floor I guess and the roof, they are a little bit different than others. And here the total, it is the summation of dead load and live load for all floors. Okay. Other important information for our structure is the design spectral acceleration for the site class D location as we said in Seattle, Washington, S sub S and S sub 1 are given and S sub 1 it is 0.5 G and FA and FV the factors for soil amplification factors 1 and 1.5 the design spectral acceleration for short periods and for one second period are given for, for us. Then there are some important information uh, that is going to be used for our P delta related to the risk category for the building it is risk category 3 and the importance factor it is 1.25 the seismic design category is D and the response modification coefficient R it is 8 and the deflection amplification factor CD it is 5.5 so these are the important information of our example now let's go directly to the drift analysis and let's assume that we have obtained the drift analysis based on the uh, T which is T computed I mean that we are going to base our uh, analysis here based on not approximate T but computed T computed T from the software okay and this is remember that this is the drift analysis using t equal to 2 t computed without p delta effects it is purely as we have done like three or four videos before for calculating the drift of the stories so uh, in this table we are going to tabulate the data here the story as you can see uh, this is fx which is going to be the forces lateral forces based on equivalent lateral force method and as you can see it is uh, like a triangle shape as you can uh, see we started from 3.5 and increasing until reach to the roof and then we calculated the uh, elastic lateral displacement for each floor as you can see also we if you look to this you're going to find that it is increasing as uh, we are going higher started from 0.526 inch to 4.3 uh, inches so from 0.5 inch to 4.3 inches so this is the elastic remember this is elastic uh, how we can obtain this this is from uh, from the analysis we can obtain this directly then delta xe which is going to be the drift this is the uh, lateral displacement of the story which is the elastic one this is the elastic drift the elastic drift is related to the ratio or the difference between two successive floors over the height between them already we have explained about these two parameters in detail in the video of uh, drift analysis okay so now this is given for us and we obtained them the next step is to obtain delta x which is the inelastic displacement which is related to the delta x e but after multiplication of c d the uh, amplification factor for displacement and divided by the importance factor already we have these values for us c d is 5.5 and i e it is 1.25 as been given in the previous uh, slide here 1.25 and 5.5 okay now we want to put the limit the limit for the drifts you can find this from table 12.2-1 uh, 
in our case it is going to be 0.015 h 0.015 h where h is given already uh, h is given for each story so for each story it is 156 inches except for the first one 216 so if you multiply this by 0.015 you are going to find the drift is given for us by 2.34 inches except for the first floor it is uh, its height is larger then its limit is going to be larger okay so this is the drift limit based on table 12.2-1 and then the ratio the ratio between column 5 over column 6 so this is column 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 and this is the limit which is 6 so if you divide the value of the inelastic drift over the limit it would give us some values here which is the ratio the ratio so if this ratio exceeds 1 then it will be not good but if it is less than 1 as we can see in all stories they are less than 1 then we can uh, be sure that it is okay all the stories are okay okay so now up till now up till now we can say that the drift analysis without the inclusion of p delta effect is giving us very nice results it is okay all the structure or all the floors they are passing the criteria and the ratio of the allowable drift or the, the ratio of the actual inelastic drift over the allowable it is less than one so everything is okay here now let's see what will happen when we include p delta when we are going to include p delta okay. now let's go to the inclusion of p delta so the p delta check is carried out in accordance with this section 12.8.7 and the p delta check the stability ratio if you remember we have talking about this stability ratio in detail in the previous video is computed for each story to care stability ratio is related to the story individual story it is not related to the total or the entire structure okay stability ratio it is a parameter for the story it's not a parameter for the entire building okay. in accordance to this equation which is already given in ASCE 710 or 16 so we I have explained every single parameter of this equation in the previous video please uh, if you do not understand these parameter why and why exactly these parameter and from where we got th those parameter please revisit the previous video directly the previous two videos okay you're going to find a detailed explanation for each uh, item of it only for the sake of um, reminder uh, we are going to give the brief description for each one here we have px which is the vertical design gravity load to care it is design and it is gravity everything like dead load live load snow load okay and this is the design to care no factors it is unfactored okay as if that it is service loads at the level okay at each level delta it is the interstory drift at level x and is based on the center of mass we are we are talking about the interstory drift at the center of mass uh, story displacement computed based on this equation in ACE I also mentioned about this in the previous video ie the importance factor as we said VX it is the total design shear take care we're talking about total design shear at level X so it is not the lateral load take care it is not the lateral load so if I go back here you have here FX right this is the lateral load but we are talking about total design shear the accumulated we call it the story shear okay at the level X okay uh, is based on CS computed using equation 12.8-3 also I have explained it before and thus includes the importance factor uh, we have mentioned about this before it includes the importance factor as a multiplier uh, HSX it is the story height and CD the deflection amplification factor ok 
okay, from the table 12.2-1. Okay, I think 12.2-1, yes, that's, that's right. I think here there's something, uh, yes, this is this limit. I think this is not from the table 12.2-1. I think that there is something here. Uh, I will like check about uh, what is the table because we have a table for the limit okay it's not 12.2-1 I guess uh, let me check it and I'm going to uh, give it to you now. so I think it is uh, it is right I think it is right so anyway now let's go to the uh, uh, this is now all the parameters that is included for this equation now let's go to the next the results of p delta analysis now let's go with the p delta analysis so we are going to make our stability analysis using t equal to t computed as we said and the results of table 3 table 3 already we have uh, like shown it before here this is table 3 so we are going to take some information from this table and we are going to use it in the this table okay so let's start here from the very first left here this is the story the height is given already p total this is the p total which is the gravity forces are unfactored this is unfactored take care of this unfactored in accordance with the definition of px in section 12.8.7 so they are or this is unfactored gravity load okay if we go back uh, go back even here I think that you're going to find this is the case for the loads okay as you can see here okay and then we are going to find that the V story this is the story shear as we said story shear accumulated this is accumulated the shears in column 4 of table 4 this is the uh, the shears in this column okay are the story shears accumulated one okay we call it the story shears okay and then delta x it is the from the previous table that already we have we have obtained before this is actually without p delta without the inclusion of p delta if we go back to this is where we have obtained this K 1.486 in the beginning <coughs> here so they are the inelastic uh, drift of each story then we are going to calculate theta this is the stability coefficient the most important one which is based on theta equal to px delta i over v h c d this is the previous slide equation so we have everything here we have p we have the delta we have i which is 1.25 vx is given for us h is given already we have the height and cd is 5.5 then we can calculate this table very uh, this column very easy when we go through it you're going to find that all the values they are like within the range of 0.1 or less than this or a little bit higher than 0.1 so this is a kind of a range for you whenever that you are calculating for p delta it should not it should not be uh, higher than this range so if you are having like 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 this is something weird and you need to check your analysis and your results okay now <clears throat> we put theta and then we need to put the what is the maximum limit for the stability coefficient which is theta maximum we can obtain it easily from the previous video also I mentioned about it it equals to 0.5 over beta CD so we know everything but we do not know beta beta it is the uh, we call it the uh, ratio between the demand to the capacity of the story demand over capacity as as we have explained it in the previous video okay demand over capacity so at the end we want to check we want to check whether that the ratio between our stability coefficient calculated based on uh, over the uh, theta maximum to be okay 
uh, theta maximum, if you look here, you are going to find that it is going to be the same for all stories, 0.091. Because beta, it is, if we're going to calculate it, if, if this one here, we're going to calculate, so theta maximum, it equals to 0.5 over beta. Beta, we, we take it as 1, okay? And CD, it is, CD, it is 5.5. So if you calculate this, you're going to give it gives to you 0.091, and it is going to be the same for all stories. So we can stop here and comment on this, and this is actually something a little bit we can say a little bit uh, weird because theta max should not be the same for all stories. Every story it has its own uh, its own characteristics, but the code here does not like give this kind of, uh, of the reflection of the characteristics different of each story. Anyway, this is what the code is dealing with the, with the issue. Just putting maximum based on the capacity, based on the capacity, which is going to be one and we do not know we can just give this one for all stories, but if you want to carry carry out any kind of analysis it is going to be time consuming for you and you are not sure what is the value or appropriate value for each story so we put one for all of them and it gives the same theta maximum anyway this is how the code is dealing with this theta maximum or the maximum stability coefficient the ratio between the two is going to give us this ratio the ratio between the actual stability coefficient over the maximum stability coefficient. The ratio, as you can see here, for some floors it is less than 1 and for other floors it is, as you can see, larger than 1. So uh, the stability check is not good here. Not good for, especially for the first five stories. For the first five stories, our structure is not having uh, the right or the sound stability against P delta. So now this is also an important issue. Commonly you are going to find that these are the first stories they are facing the problems. Okay. However the second half, the upper half is not facing the same problem. It is less. Okay. Okay. So also this is another thing for you. You need to understand it that commonly the lower stories okay, if, if it's designed, if the structure or the frame is designed well. Okay, anyway, this is the common way, okay? The first stories, they are experiencing some uh, P delta issues or problems. Okay, now this is the case. Uh, only one thing here, we added another column here. We call it required overstrength, which means that instead of putting only beta equal to 1 here, we are going to like calculate this beta. We're going to calculate this beta not based on the theta maximum, but we're going instead, we're going to put instead of theta maximum, we're going to put the actual theta to see how much beta is needed here. So we put it like this, 1 over beta equal to theta times CD over 0.5. This supposedly to be theta maximum. As we said, that in our case, for the first five story, the actual theta exceeds theta maximum, right? So we are going to put theta here as the actual theta for these floors, okay? And we will see what will happen here, what we want to, uh, how much beta is needed here. And we are going to deal with the reciprocal of beta, which is 1 over beta, because this is what we call it the over strength. So 1 over beta, it is the required over strength of the floor or the story. Okay. Okay. So we put this, so we, uh, this value, for example, 1.03, it equals to 0 0.094 times CD, which is 5.5 over 0.5. So it gives us 1.03. And we repeat it for the remaining uh, stories here. Okay, so now we want our stories to have this overstrength. What is the meaning of these values? For example, for this, the second story, it means that 1.33 means that we need to increase 
the sheer strength of this story by 33% at least in order to have P delta stability. Okay? And similar here for this story, for example, this means that we need to increase the strength or the sheer strength of the fourth floor by at least 16.5% in order to have P delta stability. Okay, so this is the significance and the meaning of these values. Okay. This is some comments on the table. Already I have mentioned most of them. We call beta is the ratio of sheer demand to sheer capacity of the story. Do you know what is the meaning of sheer demand and sheer capacity? If we have stories, different stories, the, the story itself will have some forces, right? Coming from the inverted shape that is already we have mentioned about from the ELF method. This is, we call it the demand, the sheer demand. However, the strength of the columns and the beams and everything in this floor, okay? For example, let's assume that the sheer capacity of the floor is 100. And the sheer demand coming from the, from the equivalent lateral force method, it was 90. Okay? Then the demand over the capacity, the sheer demand over the sheer capacity is 0.9, okay? which is in essence the inverse of the story over strength. That's right. So now we can say this beta equal to 90 over 100, right? So if you give or take the reciprocal of beta, it would give you 1 over beta equals to 100 over 90, right? It is almost around 1.1. This is 1.1. This point 0.1, it is the over strength of the story. Over strength means that how much residual strength is going to be there after the demand of the earthquake is going to strike the building. Okay, that's the meaning here. So this is why we use 1 over beta. We want to know how much over strength is available for this one, for this story. Okay. So commonly we use beta as 1. In our analysis we used beta is taken as 1. This is for exaggeration. I mean not exaggeration, for to be in the safe side to say that demand equal to the capacity. But commonly capacity is larger than demand. Commonly if this structure is designed taking into consideration the strong column weak beam philosophy in the design <clears throat> and taking other overstrings factors and sources okay so now theta max for all of them it is 0 0.095 as we said 0 0.5 over 5.5 over 1 so it is the same here 0 0.091 and it's the same for all stores okay in the table table 4 which is the previous table it is 0 0.04 yeah 0 0.09 I, I have already explained about this it is for these stories they are exceeding exceeding one. So already this is talking about this, uh, this uh, issue. So the comment on this part is without further analysis the building would be deemed to be non-compliant with the stability requirements and would have to be redesigned. So whenever you see this these factors here this means that the structure, your system, your structure needs to be redesigned. You need to redesign the columns and beams. Increase their strengths, for example, or something like this, okay? Because you have the stability check is not good for them, okay? This is what you should do. However, this is an important issue. However, the redesign can be avoided if the story over strength can be shown to be greater than the ratio values shown in column eight of this table. If we could prove that the over strength here, as you can see, the required over strength which is larger than one. If we could prove that the real overstrength of the building is larger than these values, for example, if we could prove that for the second story, the actual overstrength is 1.6, for example, this means that the actual capacity of the structure 
is larger than the demand by 60%. However, here from the requirements of our analysis, we were only, we need only 33%, right? So this means that we are on the safe side. But we want to prove that our real capacity is 1.6. Okay, how we can do this? How we can calculate the overstrength, the actual overstrength of the story? Okay, and this is what I was talking about, which is the story two, it was 1.33. So the point here is there are some codes giving us how we can obtain the overstrength for specific structures like moment frames, steel moment frames. Okay. The story the story overstrength is likely significantly greater than 1.3, as I said. It might be 1.7 or 1.6 or something like this, okay, for story two, because the strong column weak beam rules. So this is the first source of having overstrengths more than what we are expecting, that if we are designing our structure based on the strong column weak beam philosophy rules, that is already built into the various design specification, such as the seismic provisions for structure steel buildings, AISC 2010B. Okay, then there are like some hidden overstrengths <clears throat> and a strong column weak beam. We didn't consider that. Okay, and there are many other factors would also contribute to the overstrengths. I have mentioned about these factors if you remember in one of my uh, videos like maybe um, maybe one or two months before I was talking about the overstrengths and the sources of overstrengths and uh, not to list all of them but I'm going to list three of them here the actual versus nominal yield strengths for example nominal yield strengths that we use 36 for example KSI for steel or whatever actually this is the nominal yield strengths but the actual one may be higher than this okay uh, if we are going to talk about the actual, if you are going to take the steel really that is going to be used for construction, you are going to find that its yield strength is larger than this. This gives you over strength for the uh, entire building and for the individual story. Strain hardening. We are talking about everything to be elastic, perfectly plastic for the component, for the assembly, for the building, for the elements. However, that the real practice is that is there are some strain hardening here. We have some strain hardening, so there is additional strength is going to be provided. Another, the third thing is the plastic hinge sequence. This also adds to the the formation sequence of the plastic hinge along the building itself. If we have a building, and during the earthquake, there are some plastic hinges would be developed. The sequence of them is going to add some overstrength to the building. Sequence, that means that the time of the formation itself of the plastic hinging. So these are sources for overstrengths we need to, to take into consideration. Okay, we, we need to take into consideration and we want to see that the overstrength is higher than what's really required for P-delta. Okay, now Let's go to what else, what after that, what should we do if we know that we have theta, we have calculated theta now, and we understand that there is a kind of instability for the first five stories. So the first thing that we need to take care of, let, let me go back here, for these stories you need to redesign now, okay, if we are not going to take anything uh, like over strength into consideration. So you need to increase the shear strength. This is not only the case. There is something else that you need to take into consideration. The delta, the drift limit. If you remember before, we have, let me go back uh, like few slides before. Yes, here, the limit that we have obtained for the drift based on analysis without p-delta, all of them they were okay. Right? Now, let's go and see what will happen if we include P delta. So the limit, it is the same. But delta X, which is already obtained before, it is going to be augmented or amplified. Okay? 
it is going to be amplified based on theta and it is going to be like this delta x over 1 minus theta so if you calculate this new drift of the stories you're going to find that it's higher than the original one without p delta this is inclusion with inclusion of p delta this one without the inclusion of p delta as you can see it is higher this column is higher than this column and let's compare the new drifts with the limits we're going to find that the ratios are going to be exceeded almost in from story 2 to story 7 we'll have that they are going to exceed the limits so our drift limits also uh, have been exceeded so we have two problems now which is the first case is the instability problem related to p delta the second problem is the drift limit is not satisfied for some stories okay so this means this is this is an issue actually this is this gives to you the importance of the inclusion of p delta what should we do in this case <clears throat> you need as we said to redesign the structure increase the shear strength for example or increase the stiffness in case of the uh, uh, overcoming the drift limitation and if you want to make more detailed analysis like pushover analysis it might help you in overcoming these problems as I'm going to explain in the next few slides okay so anyway now we have understood what are the problems that is going to be developed uh, after the inclusion of P delta okay now let's go to the next and let's talk about the the way of back calculation of stability ratios when p delta effects are included in analysis actually here I'm going to talk about the software most of us do not use our hand calculations for um, for uh, obtaining the effects of p delta rather we use softwares okay so many structure analysis programs provide the option to directly include p delta effects so if we are going to use these software how we can calculate theta in this case okay this is what i'm going to talk about if an analysis is run with and without p delta effects the story stability ratios which is theta may be estimated from the results of the two analyses so this means that you need to solve your structure using two two ways this is easy in any software with the inclusion of p delta and without the inclusion of p delta okay and then the results from here and here is going to be used in order to calculate theta as we are going to see although the approach may be used for three-dimensional analysis in theory the most straightforward use is for two-dimensional analysis this approach is demonstrated here we are going to show it here so we are going to say uh, the delta which is going to be the story drift delta f the story drift from analysis including b delta so you are going to analyze your structure okay based on p delta okay with the inclusion of p delta if you are going to use sap 2000 midas etaps uh, or any other software open seas or whatever you can include p delta easily okay and then check the drift at each story so this would give you df okay and make the same analysis but without the inclusion of p delta and report the drift for each story we call it delta node the drift in the same story for analysis without p delta effects okay if you calculate this we can obtain theta to be as you can see uh, here theta let's go to the next slide so theta is going to be 1 minus delta node over delta f simply it is like this delta f the story drift with p delta effect minus the story drift without p delta effect over the story drift with p delta effect 
this would give us ratio, which is the stability coefficient. This is the stability coefficient. Okay? So now if we are going to report the values for this, we need to report delta F and delta node for our case and theta also for our case, for our example. So let's see the next slide. This is the analysis for our, uh, for our uh, structure. This is the stories. This is delta node without delta, P delta. And this is delta F with P delta, as you can see here. Here with P delta, it is larger. It is commonly larger than the case without P delta. And then theta is going to be calculated as we uh, uh, mentioned before, okay, which is 1 minus delta node over delta F. Okay, this is the case of the stability coefficient here. It is very important for us, I guess, to compare the theta coming from the analysis software and theta that we have calculated before by our hands. I think this is an important issue. These are the cases here. This is from structure analysis using software, and this is from our hand calculation. This is theta from our hand calculation, this is theta using the software. This is only for comparison, for the comparison purposes, and you are going to find that they are like not identical, but they, they are similar. So for example here, the first story and the second story, they are almost the same, but whenever you go higher, we're going to find exactly for the floor, for the roof, we're going to find that it is significantly, um, significantly large for the case of including P delta using the software rather than your hand calculation. So take care in the roof. It might happen for this case of the building, of course, that I'm talking about, that it might happen that the roof uh, stability coefficient is going to be larger if you use the real or use software analysis. Okay, okay. now let's go to our case now. So uh, now uh, remember that what I wanted from this part is to let you know how to obtain P delta or the stability coefficient using analysis software or analysis program. Okay, that's the main purpose of this part of the uh, presentation. Now let's go to another part which is related to, now already we have finished our example, it is done now. The remaining part is going to be like um, appendix, something that I want to highlight regarding how to compute the actual overstrength of the building, how to compute the actual overstrength of the building. So the point here is we are going to, first of all, this is the case this is how we are going to uh, obtain the overstrength. 1 over beta, as I have mentioned before, it equals to CD theta computed over 0.5. Take care, this is theta computed now because it exceeds the theta maximum, as we said. Okay. So, for example, if we want to calculate it for the story number 2, the overstrength for story number 2, it equals to CD, which is 5.5, and 0.5 here, it is from the equation and the value 0.121 which is the computed theta let's see it in the next slide here I think I put it yes this is already this is table 4 and this is the value 0.121 it is theta computed theta okay it's not the maximum the maximum is something we have put before but this is the computed okay then we are going to obtain the corresponding required overstrings as I have mentioned before, the corresponding overstrength is going to be 1.3. If we calculate it using 1.121, if we go back here, 0.121, it gives us 1.3. So here it is 1.33, as we said. Okay. Now, now, okay. Now, how we can obtain or in calculate the real? or the actual, that's the point here, what is the actual story over strings, okay? That's an important issue. Actually, um, the code, there are some codes you need to go through in order to find how to obtain the over strings. It's not straightforward. 
So unfortunately, the calculation of actual story strengths is not straightforward and typically requires a series of nonlinear static analysis. I'm going to talk about nonlinear static analysis in a separate course uh, in the near future. A simplified method for estimating story strengths is provided in section C3 of the commentary to the seismic provisions for structural steel buildings, ASIC 2005, and I think the later version also it will be the same. If the structure has been designed in accordance with the strong column weak beam design rules, the plastic story strengths may be estimated from the following equation. Actually, this is, this is the equation that is being used. For each floor, we have like girders, like girders here. So we are going to say that plastic hinges is going to form at the ends of the girders based on the strong column weak beam philosophy. So we are going to say that for each story, the summation, the summation of M, which is the moment or the plastic moment, MP, okay, for girders, which is, we call it G, girder I, because we have like girder 1, girder 2, if we have other stories, so we have girder 3, girder 4, so we have the summation. This summation is going to be for, for I, or this, let's assume it like, yes, okay, it is from I or J, it is no problem. We put it here, J, girder J, for example, and here from J equal to 1 to N, if we have N numbers of, of girders per story, okay. And actually, as you can see, we have two plastic hinges, so we're going to multiply in the outside by two. As you can see here, we have two. And this would be divided by H, which is the height of the floor. It seems like as if, if, if you like, look at this, V, Y, I, okay, this is the, like the story, the, the plastic story strength times H, it gives you like moment as if that is VYI times H gives you as the moment and the plastic story strength is like resisting this moment okay so that's what we this is what they put it actually for the moment resisting frames based on ASIC or AISC okay so we can calculate the story strength based on this equation if we're going to use this equation, and we used it actually for making and finding the story strength, the actual story strength, so we put it in a tabulated form, as you can see here. So this is theta, okay? This is theta, the uh, theta that is already, uh, we have calculated, and this is theta max, which is already given for all story, it is the same. This is the required over strength, which we already mentioned before. Uh, remember, for the floor uh, story, uh, floor 2, it was 1.3. And all of them, they are exceeding 1. So this is the required over strength to fulfill the maximum requirements. Now we have calculated V yield, which is the plastic yield okay, of the... Uh, girders so here we have girders one two three four five we have five girders so it will be two times from j equal to one to five and m plastic for the girders m plastic how we can obtain m plastic we are going to use by using the section sizes shown in the first figure because we have these are the figures here this is the plastic sections using the section sizes here Assuming yield stress of 50 uh, kips per inch square for steel, the story strengths for one frame are computed as shown in column 5. This is the, the values here. How we can obtain this? As I said, this is from the plastic, the plastic moment of this section size. You can find it in ASIC. Easy, you can obtain this values based on the section sizes and the yield stress, you can obtain the plastic uh, plastic moment, MP, and then divided by H, it would give you V yield for the story under consideration, and then this would give you the yield or the capacity, 
Okay, this is the capacity of the story. And then the V demand, this is the demand, the demand, which is column six here, lists the strength demands, which are based on the accumulated story force values in column two of table two, but divided by two to represent a single frame. This is in the next slide, I guess, yes, here. If you remember, this is in the beginning of the presentation. I have presented this table, and this is, we call it the demand now. Half of this value is used in the previous slide. Why half? Take care, we're talking about accumulated and half. Half because we have uh, one frame here and one frame here. So we're talking about single frame. Okay. And remember that this V demand, it is accumulated. Okay. Take care, it is accumulated, uh, accumulated story. So if you go back here, you're going to find half of it and then accumulate to the next story and the next story and so on. Okay, and then the V demand, this V demand needs to be amplified of this theta because this is the inclusion of the delta, uh, the inclusion of P delta. This is V demand based on the lateral force, but we didn't include now the P delta. So P delta is going to be included by theta. How we can do it? By dividing V demand from this column over 1 over theta, 1 minus theta. Before calculating the true overstrength, the values in column 6, which is this column, must be divided by the quantity 1 over theta, as required by section 12.8.7. We are amplifying the demand or the shear strength demand as we have amplified the uh, drift, the drifts of the stories, if you remember. Okay. Now, let's go to the last part, which is the ratio between the two. We are going to, this is the capacity, and this is the real demand. So we are going to divide both of them and get the ratio here, which is column 5 over column 7. Look here how much the values. We're talking about 4, 2.2, 2.16. All of them, they are higher than 1. This means that the actual overstrength of each story it is here 4. Can you imagine? 4 times. And here, at least, if we're talking about here, the maximum was 1.3. Our case here, the actual strength of the floor, second floor, is 1.7. This means that the actual overstrength is providing 77% additional strength. However, the required additional strength to satisfy the P delta effects is only we need 33%. So our structure is safe and sound. No need to design anything or redesign anything. You understand? This is very important. If you could go through this, you are going to find that no need for you to redesign your structure based on the inclusion of real overstrings in the analysis and design. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now this is what I, I have mentioned, just I put it in, in a way that is clearly the ratios all exceed the required ratios exactly, one over beta here. All of them, they are being exceeded. This is very larger than the actual overstrength is very large. Okay, so hence the structure satisfies stability requirements. Take care, stability requirements are satisfied of ASC 710 and satisfies the drift requirements when an explicit P delta analysis is used to compute the drifts. Yes, th that's right. If we are going to explicitly use P delta analysis, explicitly we're going to use P delta analysis uh, is used to compute the drifts. Okay. So, but actually if, if we need to mention about the drifts, Maybe the drifts you need to take care of it. Let's talk about the next slide. Drifts are not satisfied for structure when the drifts computed without P delta effects are amplified by the quantity 1 over 1 minus theta. This indicates the importance of P delta effects. Okay. So if you are going to include P delta effects, in this case, the drift limits are going to be exceeded. The ASIC formula, this is some comments as I said on the example, okay? The 
ASIC formula that is regarding the capacity or the plastic capacity of the story does not work, take care of this word, does not work for braised frames, dual systems, or any other type of structure except moment frames. We are talking about moment frames only. So do not use this, uh, this equation for any other uh, structure type other than moment frames. Calculation, calculating story strengths for general structure system is not straightforward and may not be even possible without a detailed nonlinear static pushover analysis. We need nonlinear static pushover analysis, a series of it. So for this reason and several reasons not discussed here, future versions of ASCE are likely to be abandoned this equation, which is the equation of P delta, in favor of requiring the designer to demonstrate stability through the use of nonlinear static pushover. I think the future for nonlinear static pushover analysis, which is going to be at least, at least a good substitute for the equivalent lateral force method, unless that you are going to use or do a kind of uh, nonlinear time history analysis, which is time time consuming or maybe taking it, it has a uh, it will require computational time, so nonlinear static pushover is going to be a good substitute for uh, short or for buildings that is dominated by first mode, at least. Okay, this is the end of our uh, class. Thank you very much, and I hope that you can uh, now understand and implement the main items of P delta analysis and understand the meaning of the effects of P delta on analysis. I think that this uh, this structure or this frame that I have explained today it was very um, uh, very detailed and you can get the important points of P delta and you can follow the same example if you want. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.